Hello and welcome to the Locker Room New Channel from Legacy. Today we are sitting down with a man who needs no introduction, Guildford Flames forward and GB International, Ben Davies. So first, I hope you and your family are well and thank you for taking time out to talk to us today and being our very first guest. Um, a year ago, the country was on a lockdown and things as we know about it has, has kind of changed. Uh, so today we're going to sit back, we're going to chat about last season, we're going to talk a little bit about the pandemic, uh, the up and coming Elite League streaming series, and then we're going to finish off with just uh, a few fun questions. So first things first, where are you right now and what is getting you through this lockdown? Uh, so I'm uh, posted up in Cardiff, me and my partner uh, moved back to Cardiff the end of April time, I think. And uh, yeah, we've just been been back here, so um, it was nice when we had the summer months to kind of get out and uh, do some stuff. Uh, obviously, yeah. uh, deeper into the government guidelines and that. But uh, yeah, through the winter, we've been pretty busy. My uh, my partner started a new job, and and I've been busy um, working, trying to get by. Obviously, with no hockey, no. and uh, since November, I think there's been on and off hockey. So. Um, yeah, keeping ourselves very busy. Um, but yeah, just hoping hockey starts back up full-time uh, come August. Yeah, I mean, uh, let's take it back to the 18-19 season. I mean, the Flames collected a, a conference title. You advanced to the, the cup final and the playoff finals weekend. And there was much hope for more coming into the 19-20 season. But let's be honest, it was cut short by a, a global pandemic, which no one really saw coming. Um, so when the league sat down and cancelled the season, you must have thought, well, this, this is kind of getting quite serious now. I mean, where were you when they, they told you that the season was cancelled? What was the mood like in the dressing room? And could you believe this was actually happening? Yeah, I know. So the, the week prior, we were just practising kind of as normal, obviously knowing what was going on around the world with everything and, and a lot of sporting events and, and teams cancelling. Um, so we were still going ahead. I think it was the Friday. So a day before we were due to play on Saturday that we ended up having the meeting and, and calling things off. But um, yeah, it was a strange, like you say, we started off um, the season. We were kind of getting a bit of a run going, if I remember rightly, but we started off not too great. We started to, to get back into the mix and um, it would have been uh, an exciting March. And obviously, uh, into playoffs but um obviously coronavirus had something to say yeah. about that yeah i know what it's like i mean especially from our point of view here i mean no one could really believe what was going on no one really knew where it sat or what we could do or what we could and it was a bit like is this real is this a film i don't know it sounded like a plot of a film at the time but yeah i mean from yeah, a, a sports cool. perspective it was kind of like everything was just stopping and no one really could believe it because I think from an athlete's point of view you're at your peak you're you're ready to the intensity's there you're flying and then all of a sudden you, you stop yeah yeah it's, it's, it's frustrating because obviously we we go we finish March uh, April depending on then if certain players are playing GB it could go till the end of May mm -hmm. but you're, you're not starting again then till the end of August so it's already quite a few months off and yeah. uh I think everyone stopping at that point in March was thinking, okay, well, well it sh it, this should blow over in a few months, not knowing yeah. um, we'll be a year down the line now and things are oh, no, still I mean, not everyone, quite... everyone thought it would be, be three months. I mean, that's the thing. Everyone thought it would be three months. I mean, when the league cancelled, I mean, we saw players go overseas. They went to Italy, Sweden, just to get some playing time. I mean, have you stayed in contact with the rest of the team and... How does that work? You've got like a team WhatsApp. Are you doing Zoom calls like the rest of us? Yeah, no, um, a couple of the boys are kept in, in contact uh, here here and there, but uh, the WhatsApp group itself has been fairly quiet. Yeah. Um, obviously, obviously, I think boys, some are either working and, and some were lucky enough to get jobs around Europe. So, so, the, so that side of things has kind of been a bit quiet, but um, no, it's good to see some boys have been able to to play overseas and, and keep going. Um, yeah, it's just, a, it's just a weird situation. Obviously, the, the, the hockey market out there this year was a bit crazy. Um, so I think there was quite a few of the teams still that, that haven't played too much. Yeah. Um, 
but that that that's the same as as a lot of teams in our league and uh, yeah it's, it's a bit frustrating but it, it is what it is I suppose I mean at this point when uh, with hockey cancelled were you ever concerned on how this would affect like the growth of UK hockey and the elite league I mean, the Elite League especially was in such a good place. It's in such a strong place, attracting good players coming in. Um, do you think it will have an impact financially on what they do? And, you know, what sort of uh, place do you think we'll be in when we come back maybe in September? Well, I think optimistically, we we hope we would just be back as normal come maybe August, September, if everyone uh, has yeah. the vaccine in and, and throughout uh, the country. So hope hopefully that's the case and we can kind of resume business as usual. But I know obviously a lot of teams went without um, revenue for a long time. But yeah. I don't know how how things have gone with grants. But obviously on the other the other side of the coin, there like a lot of the players have gone and had to to find jobs to get by because there there was no real support in in that respect for nah. a lot of teams. So um, yeah, I don't know. I think it'll be a little bit of a a different uh, situation, a different feel about the season, hopefully starting back up August, September time. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know 100%. Obviously, this uh, streaming series is is supporting those four teams, but yeah. I don't know how it, how it works with all the other teams. I, I, I think Sport Wales... No, is... I mean, I think it was uh, UK Sport got the money uh, initially just for UK hockey. So obviously, Belfast, Cardiff... Teams like that can't be included. I think ESO Scotland as well. So, you know, for the streaming series, there's someone coming. I think it had to be spent on UK teams. And I think it had to be UK teams that wanted to partake as well. Um, so, yeah, yeah well, I think that's... Fingers crossed those clients kind of help them get through the summer yeah. and get them go as, as business as usual next year. Because there's probably, I don't know business-wise, but they're, they're not a lot of the rinks are closed as well aren't they so yeah um, yeah there's none of them are operational at the moment so yeah i mean you guys had a terrific october november december stretch uh you won 16 out of 20 games played um including a seven game winning streak and in february you had like your your, your first ever winner belfast with a, a 5-4 overtime win i think it was and it started to feel like the team was peaking at just the right time um but how frustrating was it to be on such a good run, run with like a possible playoff spot to sitting around just doing nothing, if you know what I mean? Yeah, it was uh, quite difficult, really. Um, myself, I was kind of, especially for those few weeks, knowing the Elite League had finished, I was trying to stay in shape and uh, yeah. do whatever I could do because at that point, the the World Championships hadn't been announced that it was cancelled. Yeah. So we were kind of a little bit in limbo there, trying to trying to do some workouts out in the street and uh, get get on runs and stuff like that, keeping it keeping in as best shape as I could. But um, yeah, it was frustrating. Like like you say, we were starting to to, to get going a little bit, um, finding our mojo if you, if you if you yeah. like. And uh, yeah, I don't know. We were three, four weeks off the end of the season with playoffs still to come and, and we had a lot of players on our team that, that I think would uh, what type of players that would peak for peak for playoffs. Yeah, I mean so you had a few think. players that had just come in as well or started to find their feet as well and I think it was you were starting to to pick up to get that playoff spot um, and uh, yeah it was just a shame that it ended when it did because you had the Challenge Cup as well and you were unlucky against Nottingham at that time. I mean you had to you know, a disastrous start again, not on him, but you picked it up in the second game uh, in that mm. Challenge Cup. But it was just unlucky that it just didn't go that way. Um, but yeah, I mean, so with, you know, no hockey being played for almost a year. I mean, how, how did you stay in shape and not having access to gyms and rinks? I mean, how does that affect that? And how will that affect the lead up to, obviously, the streaming series for some guys that haven't played for a while? Yeah, there's there's definitely that aspect. There's going to be a few boys in the streaming series early on that have not skated a, a ton, if yeah. if at all, in in the last little while. Uh, no, not down to themselves. Just uh, the availability of ice and and teams has has not been great. So yeah. that's going to be interesting to see. I don't think 
like it's going to be a running start. So as soon as we, we start practicing, we're going to be more or less straight into game. So they've got, <laughs> they've got no time to really get going there. But um, nah. in terms of training through the summer, I try to keep myself as busy as possible. I was doing, uh, I ha- I'm lucky I got some equipment here. Yeah. Uh, my partner, and my, my, my sister, we were getting a few workouts in. I, I, I like my road biking, so I was getting out. And lucky we got the countryside and some uh, beaches close. So um, I was trying to get yeah. a lot of that. So that was that was good time in the summer that I don't really necessarily get through the season to, to get out on the bike. Um, so, yeah, it's just trying to keep as busy as possible. Um, when the gyms did open up, I... I I made sure to get in there as much as possible, but it's uh, like it's open for two months and then it's closed and then it's open. So you kind of yeah. got to fit your training around that. Um, so yeah, just trying to stay as healthy as possible. Um, yeah. more than I mean, I know I can. There's not much time to really prepare for this streaming series. I mean, it's um, as a team, you normally would wrap up a training camp probably at a certain speed and intensity ready to go into a full season. Um, so with a lack of time to prepare, how do you think this is going to affect players, not just physically, but also mentally as they head into a game? Yeah, absolutely. I think most players probably throughout the summer periodize their training. So they, they, yeah. they all focus knowing when they're going to start maybe end of April, early April, uh, end of August, early August. So they they periodize and they know months in advance that they're gonna try and hit yeah. around about there and be in decent shape coming into things. But with us with the streaming series, we've only had uh, I don't know two three weeks notice kind yeah. of like going. Um, I'd hope guys are in decent enough shape anyway. Um, myself and guys playing in the, the spring cup have been able yeah. to get on the ice and and get things going there as well, which has been able to help me because I know. Early on with that, it was uh, trying to get some of the rust off hockey-wise. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so hopefully it'll, it'll be an entertaining few days. I, I don't know exactly, but I think we're going to have three or four days practice, maybe a warm-up game, and then another few yeah. days in straight. So, um, I mean, looking ahead to that series, I mean, you got drafted by uh, Brian Fiancy's Manchester Storm, where you will look up to play with some old teammates again. I mean, personally, I love the draft night. I felt the league done a great job with that. And I'd like to see it maybe introduced each season. I mean, how would you feel about a draft night? Uh, first of all, it was the, the league done a really good job of it. And uh, mm. I, I, I watched it along with everyone because I, I had no idea where I was going. So yeah. I, was, I was interested to find out first and foremost. But um, yeah, it was, it was a really uh, good way of doing things and, yeah. and adding some excitement into things. Uh, I'm I mean, glad. I just felt it kind of, um, it mixed things up because, you know, in the league, you don't have relegation, you don't have promotion like football does. Uh, in America, obviously, we know they have a draft night and it's a huge, huge deal. But over here, we don't have that kind of pathway or anything for new players coming in. They just kind of come in. So for this, it was just something that was completely different. I think sparked a lot of interest with a lot of fans as well. I mean, I'd love to see something like that, but I don't know how it would kind of work. Yeah, I think it, it'd be difficult moving forward doing it. It, it. It's unique here because everyone's all in Nottingham. So the yeah. logistics side of things, is uh, you don't have to house temperates that live uh, elsewhere. Um, it's really fun, and it'd be it'd be cool to to get some feeder system for younger players, maybe at like yeah. even a bit younger, because there's the the British uh, development side of things, if you will, and bringing Brits over and playing into the elite league is not quite maybe where it should be. I think no, how I many people would do that. So. Yeah getting something like this in place moving forward could potentially be a good way yeah. about it. But it's a, uh, it's it's a huge get. jump. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, even back in the day when I was playing, it was even a big enough jump to the BNL from, you know, yeah. your under-19s. But going from now, a junior, into the elite league where it's, it's you know, serious hockey, you know, big guys, everything like that, it's a huge jump, especially if you're 18, 19. You're not physically ready yet. Yeah, that's the thing. Like, obviously, there's a lot of imports, and the Brits that are playing uh, to a certain de- mm. level, so the standard already is is very high. Yeah, um, you see that with say the national team, how, how well they've been doing uh, the last few years and stuff like that. But yeah. uh, 
I think the jump is massive and needs to be a way around it. And obviously teams are not going to be able to, there's not going to be a lot of situations where teams can play the younger players because there's a lot on the line. So I don't know. I'd like to see moving forward, the input level potentially coming down and, and yeah. there being more spots open for British players. I, uh, um, I think this is going to be a great opportunity for young British players who are in this uh, streaming series to actually show to GMs, other organisations, just what they can do. Um, and yeah. it might be a case that someone thinks, oh, hang on, I might take a chance on this kid. Yeah, I've been playing in Swindon for the last um, six, eight weeks, something like that. Yeah. Now. And there's, uh, there's some really good youngsters in those teams, some that are in the draft and, and being picked, yeah. and, and some that are not, and they're still a little younger. And there's um, some exciting talent coming through, but there needs to be an, uh, an avenue for them to come through. Because yeah. if there's not, it's, it's always difficult for guys to break through. So. Yeah. Um, Hockey relies a lot on, should we say, the, the team chemistry, uh, the team bonding, uh, which can take a while uh, to get a team to gel and, you know, know where each other is on the ice. I mean, what kind of hockey and, you know, level of play do you expect, um, uh, do you expect when you start playing in this streaming series in a few weeks? I, I, I don't know exactly. I think it's going to be a little interesting. I think some of the imports coming in, from what I've seen so far, are players that have played already this season. Yeah. Uh, so they're not going to have to worry about aspects that some British players that haven't necessarily, with the rust potentially, yeah. are not playing so much. Uh, I think the standard will be pretty decent. Everyone's obviously fighting to, to make an impression, to make the GB team. Yeah. Uh, for contracts next year. So, so there's, there's, there's a lot up for grabs. And... Um, like with it being a condensed season, it's it's going to be interesting to see. Obviously, five weeks, I believe, uh, from start to finish. Uh, so, yeah, I I think I think it'll be interesting. And obviously, there's lots of games, so you're going from one game to the other, pretty much. It's all going to be under one venue, and uh, yeah, yeah, I'm interested to see how it how it, how it comes out. I mean, you took part in the uh, Spring Cup with Swindon to gain some valuable ice time while there was no Elite League. Um, how did you find that experience of being in a bubble, getting tested before games, and of course, no fans? I mean, what was that like? Um, different. Yeah, a little bit different with the, the COVID regulations. Obviously, yeah. we get tested um, twice a week uh, minimum. Uh, to, uh, yeah, and then we're split up, so we're in a few different tr changing rooms. So there's obviously distance between us the whole time. Uh, the, no fans is kind of it, it, it is weird, but it's something already you kind of have not gotten used to. It's, it's, it's not good, and I hope things get back to normal as soon as possible. But um, yeah. I think players growing up have all, all played with no fans and it. it's a little bit like that just the no atmosphere and the, there's not so much of a momentum swing yeah I mean, fans you know, can advantage. swing a game you know if you're Absolutely. down and your fans can pick you up and you know it's like when you go into a, a big arena i mean like uh take playoffs for instance at nottingham i mean that's a huge crowd and you know that really can sway you one way or another so i think it's a massive difference when you have no fans um especially if you're losing or stuff like that, you just need that pick-me-up. But it, it must be a strange perspective uh, for you guys being professional um, athletes, not having the crowd that there, you know, the, the team, you know, they support the team day in, day out, but not being able to celebrate when you score a goal and things like that. Yeah, the whole um, atmosphere of things is different when you're warming up. Mm. Uh, but like on the ice there's 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 no one there usually uh yeah. the, the buzz is starting to start around the arena um i'm sure when we get to nottingham with this streaming series there uh or the elite series there are uh, i don't know six seven thousand whatever nottingham holds and it's going to be more or less empty so um, yeah that's going to be the strangest thing ever is walking into that arena yeah just nothing uh i mean i remember on playoffs i walked in there and it was empty and I was thinking, oh, wow, this is nice because it's, you know, the ice was down, but never could I actually imagine what it'd be like playing in front of no one in that arena because it's massive. I know, I know. I don't know. Um, 
Oh, actually, I did see that they're maybe making some cardboard cutouts or... Yeah, like yeah. So, yeah. Uh, I don't cool. know if they do the... Uh, the coverage has actually been really good on the Spring Cup. Uh, I've watched yeah. a few games, and I think streaming has actually... Uh, really good, and I hope this encourages maybe more organisations to take up streaming. Um, so I'm hoping yeah, I, you know, streaming for this uh, elite series is going to be good as well. I've only heard good things, yeah, about the Spring Cup. So, um, like, w- with there being no supporters in the rinks, that that the quality of the streaming, I would say, has to be good. There has to be extras yeah. that necessarily wouldn't have been in the webcast. In a, in a normal game, because the fans need to experience the. I, I saw there's maybe interviews uh, during period breaks and stuff like that. So yeah. as much fan interaction as possible through all this it, it is needed, really. I would say because yeah. I mean, don't forget. I mean, they need to hockey as everyone. well. They need something to still feel close to the club, and you know, it's working with football. Um, why not working with us? So yeah, I, I think it is. Plus, it's extra revenue. You know, these mm-hmm. clubs are going to get it, £10 here, £10 there. And I don't think coming back, when it comes back in September, you know, people want to see live sport. Uh, they will go. So, you know, I don't think even if you streamed it, it's going to have an effect on people's attendance. Yeah. It, it would be nice moving forward if the, the league were to... Mm-hmm. Maybe they could use this as kind of a trial and, and there yeah. could be... Some streaming, I know some place, uh, some leagues uh, in all different sports do like streaming on YouTube potentially. Yeah, yeah. Just, just I don't know, more more engagement there. The way, whatever it takes really to grow the sport a little bit more, get more people involved in ice hockey and yeah, uh, and yeah. It, I, mean, I think I think it's a sport that needs more coverage with how good and how strong yeah. the fan base feels about her and how, how passionate everyone is involved in all these clubs. Just push it out as much as possible. You see, see, I, I know it's not as easy as how I'm talking about it, but you see netball, you see basketball, they're all yeah. they're all on, on TV and I, I think exactly. I he's right there. I think so. we've got the capacity to do it now. Um, it can be done. It's just obviously if everyone's in agreement with it at the time. So hopefully, you know, they'll take the streaming series forward and maybe look at putting these elements in. Uh, I mean, looking at the teams that are involved in this series, uh, who are you looking forward to playing against? And which player do you think is actually coming in looking really sharp at the moment? Well, that's a good question. Um, uh, Who am I looking forward to playing against? Probably... Probably all of them, to be honest. Yeah. To just be nice to, uh, nice to uh, just play. Play first of all for Manchester. That's going to be a cool experience, like you said earlier. That I'm playing with yeah. some some old teammates and some close friends, so uh, I'm looking forward to to getting out there and and just getting a feel. All the three teams that we're playing against, they're going to have different feels about them. Yeah. They're all going to have new players that we haven't played before. So um, yeah, I'm just looking forward to getting out there, experiencing it all, seeing. How the setup with uh, the rink in and out and and being in the hotel and I don't know. There's a lot to look forward to. There's a lot I I don't know right now with with things moving forward. But uh, no, I it's, mean it's going to be interesting. in looking at the uh, Spring Cup. I know um, Liam Kirk's been looking really sharp since coming back from the OHL. But I you know making your step up if he is you know doing that type of thing. Um, I mean he's kind of like. He looks like he's increased in size um, and it looks like in speed as well. I mean, just the first couple of games in, that he played for Sheffield were really good. Um, so I was impressed actually with him. He's a totally different player now, I feel. Uh, so coming back from, you know, looking for him in the World Championships, I think would be a, a solid little look. Uh, yeah, I think, I think he's been in Sweden at the start of the year. Yeah. Um, we played them since right at the start of this Spring Cup and we, we play him again this Sunday. Uh, the last game before we move into the to Nottingham. Yeah. But uh, yeah, you can obviously see his points. He's um, he, he's he's had a superb few weeks and yeah, and I the think whole Sheffield him, team to be scoring for fun. Yeah, I think for him, he's had a point to prove as well. He wants to come back and he wants to tell people, you know, that he's good and he's a better player than he was when he left. Um, you know, so that's that's good. But I mean, I'm looking forward to actually seeing a whole different 
element with these teams because it's not the Nottingham, you know, it's not the Sheffield, you know, it's, these are like, you know, players that have put themselves forward. It's almost like a scrimmage in a way. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see how this is going to turn out. And uh, I can't call it either way yet. Yeah, well, like you said, with the draft, there's a lot of British players that are playing for teams that they haven't before and, and seeing how, how people do things differently. Um, so it's, it's going to be a learning experience for all the players as well. Hopefully um, everyone can learn a little bit off each other, whether that be training-wise, uh, off-ice. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's just going to be an interesting dynamic. Um, and, and some Brits are playing on teams that... Uh, you, you wouldn't have thought they'd be playing on, so. No, no, that's good. Um, okay, we're going to move on just to some little fun questions uh, that were sent through. Uh, if you had to pick one Flames player to be on lockdown with, who would you pick? Oh, um, oh I don't know. I don't know. Why don't I say Owen Griffiths? <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> I know I can just, um, and any time we play poker, I'm, uh, I'm pretty much he's up against it if we play poker and uh, it'd be good to pass the time yeah and sometimes I, I, I do play on poker I'll say Griff and uh, I know he's, his skill level on a poker is not quite there yet so oh okay uh, and the other one that we got sent through was what Netflix series did you binge or are you currently binging at the moment oh um like everyone is trying to go through as much of net well not as much but just scrolling netflix trying to find some stuff when we got some free time yeah i um, mean I've, I've been weeks, honestly, recently uh drive to survive which is the formula one uh series which is just i was just going to suggest that i've just watched the first episode of the new one last night yeah but uh the last few months i haven't watched much netflix but me and my partner watched uh ozark oh yeah that's good uh, earlier on yeah. Earlier on in lockdown, we both really liked that. Yeah, so, um, yeah, I got into that was line on. of duty and uh, all that kind of stuff. So uh, there just wasn't anything to do in the beginning apart from watch Netflix. So yeah, is that line of duty on there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's on Netflix up to uh, season. There must be the new series coming out. So I see people yeah, it talking on Sunday. Time. Yeah, it started on Sunday. Um, I mean, so, yeah, it's, it's worth it's, worth investing. Um, but yeah, Ben, we're going to wrap this up now. Um, so. Thanks for joining us um, and take care and good luck in the rest of the, well, the start of the series. And I'm sure we'll be touching base with you very, very soon. Okay, awesome. Thanks, Adam. <laughs>